She thought it was a normal ant's nest until experts told her the truth. For Arizona resident Margaret Wilson, it started as a minor garden nuisance. A small, unassuming mound of disturbed earth appeared one morning near an old tree stump in her backyard. She dismissed it as a common ant colony, a normal part of life in the desert landscape. But day by day, the mound grew with an almost unnatural speed, expanding outwards and upwards. Soon, smaller mounds began to appear across her property, like satellites of a hidden empire. When she finally called in experts to deal with the problem, they made a discovery so vast and so dangerous that their first urgent instruction was for her to lock her doors and hide inside her house immediately. What lay hidden beneath her quiet suburban garden was not a simple nest. It was a sprawling subterranean megalopolis, home to millions of one of the most aggressive and formidable creatures on the planet. To understand the chilling reality of what Margaret Wilson found in her backyard, we must first understand the story of a highly successful and dangerous invader. Our story begins not in the deserts of Arizona, but in the wetlands of South America, the native home of a species of ant known as Solenopsis invicta, or, more commonly, the red imported fire ant. For millions of years, these ants were just one part of a balanced ecosystem. But sometime in the 1930s, that balance was shattered. A few stowaway fire ant queens, likely hidden in the soil used as ballast in a cargo ship, made a fateful journey from their native Brazil to the port of Mobile, Alabama. In this new land, free from their natural predators and competitors, they found a paradise, and they began to conquer it. What followed was one of the most successful and destructive biological invasions in modern history. From that single entry point in Alabama, the fire ants began an unstoppable march across the American South. They spread through Texas, Florida, and eventually all the way to the western deserts of Arizona and California. Their success is a testament to their incredible resilience and their aggressive, warlike nature. Fire ants don't just build nests, they build fortresses. Their colonies are vast, complex underground networks of tunnels and chambers that can extend deep into the earth. And unlike many other ant species, their colonies can contain not just one, but hundreds of egg-laying queens, allowing their population to grow at an explosive, exponential rate. A single mature colony can contain over 250 zero-individual ants. But what truly makes them a menace is their venom. When a fire ant nest is disturbed, the ants don't just defend, they attack in a coordinated swarming mass. They latch onto a threat with their mandibles, and then, in a terrifying display of synchronized aggression, they all sting at once. The sting injects a potent alkaloid venom that creates a painful, fiery burning sensation, giving the ant its name. For most people, a single sting is intensely painful, but a swarm attack can be medically serious, and in some rare cases, even fatal. They are a formidable and dangerous force of nature, a tiny army that has successfully colonized a continent. Our story's protagonist, Margaret Wilson, was a retiree in her late 60s, living in a quiet suburb of Phoenix, Arizona. Her greatest passion was her garden. She had spent years cultivating a small oasis of green in the middle of the desert, a place of peace and tranquility. When the first small mound of dirt appeared in her lawn, she wasn't overly concerned. Ants were a part of life. But as the days turned into weeks, the mound grew at a rate that defied her experience. It became a large, hardened dome of earth, and new, smaller mounds began to erupt across her carefully manicured lawn, like a strange, spreading infection. The final straw came when her small dog, playing in the yard, accidentally disturbed one of the smaller mounds and was instantly swarmed yelping in pain from dozens of stings. Margaret knew she was dealing with something beyond the scope of a simple can of insect spray. She called a local pest control company, one that specialized in the region's more difficult infestations. A lead expert and his team arrived the next day. The expert, a seasoned entomologist, immediately recognized the distinctive dome-shaped mounds as the work of fire ants, but he was struck by the sheer size and number of the nests. He explained to Margaret that what she was seeing on the surface was likely just the tip of the iceberg. To understand the true scale of the problem, they needed to see what was happening underground. The team brought out their specialized equipment. 
It was a sophisticated acoustic sensor, a device that could listen for the subtle vibrations and sounds of insect movement deep within the earth. They placed sensors at various points across Margaret's property. The expert watched the readings on his tablet screen, and his casual, professional demeanor began to change. His eyebrows furrowed in concentration and then in disbelief. The data painted a picture that was far more extensive and far more terrifying than he had ever imagined. The underground network of tunnels was not just confined to the area around the main mound. It was a sprawling, interconnected megalopolis. The tunnels extended beneath her entire garden, under her driveway, and were even beginning to encroach on the foundation of her house itself. He was not looking at a few separate colonies. He was looking at a single, massive super colony, a subterranean empire that was home to millions of ants. And then he saw the thermal readings. The core of the colony was generating a significant amount of heat, a sign of an immense and densely packed population. He realized the full scale of the danger. A colony this large, if seriously disturbed, could erupt from the ground in a wave of millions of aggressive, swarming insects. At that moment, his professional concern turned into genuine, urgent fear for Margaret's safety. He looked up from his screen, his face pale. He looked at her and said, Ma'am, I need you to go inside your house right now, lock the doors, and do not come out until I tell you it is safe. Margaret Wilson, confused and terrified, retreated into her home, locking the door behind her as the expert had instructed. Through her window, she watched as the pest control team moved with a new and unsettling urgency. The lead entomologist was on his phone, not making a routine call, but speaking in the rapid, serious tones of someone reporting a major emergency. Soon, more vehicles began to arrive, not from the pest control company, but from the local university's biology department and even the state's wildlife authorities. Margaret's small suburban street was now the center of a major scientific operation. Later that afternoon, the lead expert, now joined by a university professor, approached her house and spoke to her through the screen door. He explained the full, horrifying truth of what his sensors had revealed. What was under, her garden was not just a large nest, or even several large nests. It was a single, unified super colony. A fire ant super colony is a rare and formidable natural phenomenon. It's a sprawling, interconnected network of nests and tunnels, all belonging to a single, massive, cooperative society, often with hundreds or even thousands of egg-laying queens. The expert explained that this was one of the largest and most densely populated super colonies he had ever seen documented in the state of Arizona. Their equipment estimated a population of several million aggressive fire ants. The horrifying truth was that the ground beneath her entire property was like a loaded spring. Any major disturbance, like a clumsy attempt at extermination or even heavy landscaping, could trigger a massive, defensive eruption from the ground, a living carpet of millions of stinging insects that would be dangerously aggressive and almost impossible to contain. The situation was far too large and too dangerous for conventional pest control. But the scientists also explained that this terrifying discovery was also an incredible scientific opportunity. To have a super colony of this size and complexity available for study was unprecedented. They proposed a radical and spectacular solution, a method that would both neutralize the threat and preserve the colony's incredible architecture for science. They wanted to create a colony cast. This is a technique used by entomologists and artists where a molten metal, usually aluminum, is poured into the main opening of an ant colony. The molten metal flows down through the entire network of tunnels and chambers, perfectly filling every single space. When the metal cools and hardens, it creates a perfect, solid, three-dimensional sculpture of the colony's hidden underground city. The team would then painstakingly excavate this metal structure, revealing the colony's secrets in stunning detail. Margaret, after her initial shock, agreed. A few days later, a specialized team arrived with a portable foundry and hundreds of pounds of recycled aluminum. The process began. Dressed in protective silver-colored heat-resistant suits, the team melted the aluminum in a crucible until it was a shimmering molten liquid. Then, in a moment of high drama, they began the pour. With incredible care, 
They tilted the crucible and a stream of liquid silver fire poured into the main opening of the fire ant mound. It flowed for several minutes, the earth drinking the molten metal as it filled every hidden chamber and secret passage deep beneath the ground. After the pour was complete, the long wait began. It would take a full day for the massive metal structure to cool and solidify. The next day, the excavation started. It was a delicate process, like an archaeological dig. Using shovels and then hand tools, the team carefully began to remove the earth from around the metal cast. Slowly, painstakingly, the full structure was revealed. What emerged from the ground was a breathtaking alien-like sculpture. It was a complex, branching, and deeply beautiful structure, a metallic tree with a vast network of roots. The central shaft plunged over 15 feet into the earth, and from it, Dozens of horizontal chambers radiated outwards on multiple levels. There were wide, flat chambers for the nursery, where the queen and her larvae would have lived, and smaller, granular chambers for storing food. A complex network of ventilation tunnels snaked their way towards the surface. It was a perfect, intricate city, a masterpiece of natural engineering, all built by millions of tiny architects, now immortalized in solid metal. The final cast weighed over 700 pounds and was a stunning piece of both scientific evidence and accidental art. The threat to Margaret's home was gone, but her perspective on the world had been changed forever. The small, unassuming ant mound she had once dismissed as a simple nuisance was in fact the visible peak of a hidden, sprawling, and highly organized alien world that had been thriving just inches beneath her feet. The incredible metal cast of the fire ant supercolony was carefully transported to the State University, where it became a centerpiece exhibit in their Museum of Natural History, a permanent and powerful testament to the complexity and hidden wonders of the natural world. It is a story that reminds us that sometimes the most horrifying and fascinating discoveries are not in remote jungles or deep oceans, but are waiting silently just beneath the surface of our own backyards.